unpaid amounts. <clears throat> There's a matching concept. Let's say that I have you work for me. You see this a lot now. <clears throat> or better yet, let's, let's take an example that I leave my job in industry as a top flight engineer. I worked 20 years for General Motors and I was making $200,000 last year. And finally I said, I've had enough. I want to go start my own company. And I leave and I'm, I'm working off my life savings. So instead of paying myself $200,000 a year salary, I now pay myself $1,000 a month, just what I need to live. Right? But I'm spending 3,000 hours and it's all SR&D in the first year. So the CRA would say, oh yeah, you can claim on the 12,000 and get your credits, but it's really not that much money, right? It's almost not worth my time. What I'm saying, and in section R, <coughs> is there's a matching concept. If you did $100,000 of work in a year, either I did it myself or someone else did, I have to claim the amount. Hey, uh, on my T6 is one, I think I did $100,000 worth of work. There's a line there, it's T1.2 of your hand is, line 315. It says wages that you owe someone in the year, but you haven't paid them within 180 days a year in. So what they do is they review, because two or three years from now, I can't go back when I got the money to pay myself and say, oh, I want to file a claim for three years ago. I'm past my 18 month deadline. You explain the work that was done in the year. Whether you pay for it or not, it's a secondary issue. You have to claim all your costs. There's lines for costs that are paid and costs that are unpaid. They review it and they approve it. If I say, well, <coughs> let's say I'm a specified employee, I can get up to $232,000 this year that would qualify. So I paid myself 12 and I owe myself another 220. And I think the full 232 is SR&ED. CRA will review it. They'll give me my credits right now on the 12. They'll approve the other 220 and in any future year where I can show I paid my income tax withholdings, then they'll just pay me my credits in that year. Okay? So it's a way that you can use, this is an anti-avoidance provision to say any amount that's not paid within 180 days a year end, you don't get any credits because you may never pay that. So if you don't pay it, it's not really an expense, is it? You should have paid it, but you didn't. If you don't pay it, you don't get the credits on it. Right? <clears throat> Section R talks about how we can use that anti-avoidance provision in that case kind of as a planning tool. Hey, I can't afford to pay myself, but I did do $200,000 of work. Siri so can come in and review all they want. They're going to be impressed that I did all this for only $200,000. Approve the assessor's file. 